130, July 557, NFO. 139. Welcome to U.S. Farm Report, a public information program brought to you in the interest of agriculture, rural business, and the well-being of our nation by members of the National Farmers Organization in this local area. The National Farmers Organization takes pride in inventing a new marketing system to meet the needs of the 20th century, collective bargaining for agriculture. NFO represents new thinking in a new generation of farmers. U.S. Farm Report presents Main Street and the Farmer with W.W. W. Swaim, the Reverend E.W. Mueller, and Ed Shima as moderator. Welcome to another U.S. Farm Report. Uh, some of you in the audience may wonder why the NFO, and uh, there are probably many reasons for the NFO, but boiling it down real briefly, uh, the income of farmers over the last several years has been considerably below the, rest, the income of the rest of the economy. Currently, the uh, parity ratio stands at about 74% of parity. Uh, a recent congressional study showed that uh, farmers were getting only about two-thirds of the income of the rest of the people in the economy. Uh, these inequities uh, can't exist over a long period of time without causing serious problems, uh, not only to farmers, but to the rest of the economy. Uh, we want to go into some of these things today on today's U.S. Farm Report. And on the uh, program today, we're, uh, we have uh, Dr. E.W. Mueller, who is with the uh, Department of Church and Community Planning, Lutheran Council in the United States of America, Chicago, Illinois, and also W.W. Swaim, uh, better known uh, as Butch Swaim, and he uh, heads the National Farmers Organization Research and Information Department, which is headquartered at Corning, Iowa. Uh, we'll uh, start off today's program by, uh, first of all, going to Dr. Mueller and asking him why Main Street should be concerned with the general agricultural situation as we have it today. Dr. Mueller. Well, Main Street and the farmer are closely tied together. I would say that in years past, in our overemphasis on independence, perhaps the two have not worked as closely as they might have worked. They've always had a concern for each other, and they've been friendly and uh, had a community spirit and the like, but they never really have zeroed in on the basic problem that you're mentioning that the farmer needs to have an equitable price for his input of labor and his input of capital. And this spirit of interrelatedness needs to be developed. And I would say the uh, Main Street, man on Main Street, ought really to be concerned, not just from his own self-interest, but as was mentioned in the opening statement, because of the well-being of the nation. I would say that the, the man on Main Street and the farmer they have a tremendous responsibility at this particular point because if they can come up with a method of working together and supporting each other, by that I mean is encouraging each other in their particular different responsibilities, then they can render a real service to the nation in helping to solve this basic problem that we face today in that the producer of food and fiber is not being equitably paid. And I would say again that the Main Street man must somehow recognize that he's in this as deep as a farmer. The, uh, going on to Butch, on uh, why you feel the uh, businessman on Main Street should be concerned with the general agricultural situation, uh, would, would you elaborate on this some then, Butch? Well, most everyone, a, student, a real good student of economics, realizes that the farm income pattern sets the prosperity level of our nation. And our Secretary of Agriculture, Orville Freeman, recently made the statement that farm income doesn't improve. The family farm system will disappear to be replaced by a monolithic corporate farming operations that could conceivably control the supply to get any price that they want. And most certainly, if this takes place, the family farm doesn't get a price now. If this takes place, and corporate agriculture should be the way of life in rural America, most certainly, Main Street won't be involved because corporation farming with one corporation possibly owning the whole county most certainly will have the company store and Main Street will be completely out of gear so they have more to lose than the farmer themselves. Uh, Dr. Mueller, 
Uh, before the program, you'd mentioned that the, uh, actually, the businessman had more at stake in this than the farmer did. Uh, would you elaborate on this then? Well, yes, in this sense that uh, if the family farm system goes out of the picture, the family farmer can always sell his land because there'll be a price for it. But if the small town disappears, there's no one that will want to buy the Main Street man's store, or his lumber yard, or his hardware store, and the like, you see. And therefore, he has really, he's really in a tight spot. And I would say that he ought to really see how he's in this with the farmer, and that they ought to really work together on, on this. Now, there are uh, several different uh, ways of working together on this, of course, and, uh, and uh, different approaches and so on. The uh, NFO has uh, worked real actively in terms of bargaining for farm products to raise the general price level uh, to do this rather than go to the government asking for a subsidy or whatever might be involved. And uh, how would this work, Butch? Well, of course, if the price doesn't come in the marketplace, this leaves out the rural community. Mm -hmm. And because the rural community lives mostly off of the gross farm income. And they also live off the net farm income, which the family farm pays for its own family education, its, its debt retirement and the like. But if it doesn't, the, market, uh, the price doesn't come in the marketplace, this will leave rural America holding the bag, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Because most certainly, if it, if it isn't uh, come that way, why, they won't buy these other production things and, and uh, keep them in business. And uh, the... Statistics show, Ed, that for instance, rural America, farm gets in so much money as gross farm income. 54% uh, of that, historically, has gone on to other segments. I mean, the farmer has paid this out. And right at the present time, gross farm income is just about half what it ought to be. And this is averaged and, out to uh, 59, Ed. And uh, the uh, local businessman gets most of this uh, money that's spent by the farmer. Right. The local businessman gets 54% of the gross farm income historically when we were in balance. Mm -hmm. I'd like to take a little different slant to that, uh, Ed. From this standpoint, I think the farmer has the responsibility to solve this problem himself. He ought to have his own organization and uh, so has the necessary strength that he can go into the market with bargaining place and demand a price. But we all know that it's very difficult to organize the farmer. And I think here's where the man on Main Street could be a real help to encourage the farmer to really work together with his farmers, uh, his, uh, his neighbors and his friends. Too often, the Main Street person takes quite the opposite attitude. He discourages and says, well, you farmers can't get together anyway, see? And we're brainwashing our farmers and trying to convince them that, that they'll never organize. And I think we, the man on Main Street ought to really make a real contribution to encourage the farmer and to create a climate that will convince the farmers that they can work together. Because only if they work together and only if they join an organization and make a commitment to the organization will they achieve what you're calling for, Swain. The, the point is it's well taken. They need a price. But no one is going to go out there and give them the price until they themselves put themselves in a position and that they are in a bargaining position and can demand a just and a fair price. In this sense, I mean that the, uh, the businessman ought to work together with the farmer. Not that he joins his organization. See, this I don't think necessarily would be desirable even. See. I think the farmer should have his own organization which he should run and should manage. You see. But the community ought to encourage the farmers to get the job done. I think that uh, word you said, community, is a real important thing. This would include uh, the rural ministers, the business people, the bankers, the school teachers, school superintendents, and others. As Dr. Hitty, Dr. Earl Hitty, who heads up the Agriculture Adjustment Center at Ames, told a group of bankers and business people in, in, Florida, or in uh, Texas some time back that if the farmers and the business people and the bankers don't wake up and start working together along those lines, Dr. Mueller, that they all go down the drain and they just as well realize that this has to be done. I think in the people in the rural areas, we have some mental blocks. And we are very much concerned and talk about our freedom, our sense of independence, and we can do what we want to do. This is fine. We're all for freedom. But I think there's a negative side to freedom, and there's a positive side to freedom. By negative, we mean uh, the sense I want no one to tell me what to do. 
I want to be able to do what I want to do when I want to do it. If I want to sell my uh, cow, I want to sell it now. I want to sell it where I can sell it. I'm not going to wait for the neighbor. If I have some beans to sell, I'm not going to wait until the rest are ready. See? This sense of independence. Now, this, this is fine, but if we put too high a price on this, then we will lose the very independence that we want. There's a positive side to freedom, too, in this sense, that I covet with my neighbor or my uh, fellow members that we're going to do this together. Now, in a sense, I give a little freedom in doing this, but in doing it together, we can achieve things that otherwise we could not achieve. In this connection, I'd like to tell a little story uh, about fishing. Now, I'm not a very good fisherman, but I know that when I go up to fish in Minnesota or Wisconsin, they will tell me when I can fish, how many fish I can catch, what kind of fish I can catch, how long they have to be. Now, this is not being done to take fishing away from me. This is being done by the sportsmen themselves in the interest that there will be fishing. Now, in the same sense, I think farmers need to be willing to give up some things, which they give up when they join a good organization that can be tough and that can demand uh, power in the marketing place. They give up something, but they get so much more. Now, here is where the businessman needs to convince the farmer that he needs to do this. But this is where I think we're falling down. In other words, like the fisherman being able to continue fishing, the farmer be able to continue farming. Right. Uh, <coughs> there, uh, you, you hear quite a lot uh, in terms of, well, I don't want to lose my freedom for this reason and that. But, uh, Butch, as far as the uh, NFO is concerned, how much freedom would you be uh, losing if you were to cooperate with the NFO or join the NFO, whatever might be involved in a particular person's uh, situation. Well, I don't consider that you give up any freedoms at all. I consider, like Dr. Mueller says, that you gain a lot of freedoms because you gain a fair price at the marketplace as soon as the farmers start working together. You might lose your freedom to go broke, so to speak, but they've got people more concerned about losing their freedom to go broke than they have losing their freedom to make a little money, Ed. Mm -hmm. and for a change, I think the time the family farm start making a little money and get together so that we can preserve the family farm system of agriculture, just as the, the sportsman, as Dr. Mueller pointed out, has preserved the fishing. If they hadn't have done this, fishing would have been gone a long time ago. Probably most of the fish would have been caught by now, and it would be over. And the same thing goes for the family farm. If we don't get together and organize for a fair price, as the Secretary of Agriculture has said the family farm will go down the drain. Uh, along this line, uh, uh, I, of course, am a member of the NFO, and uh, I help uh, with the various things involved from time to time and uh, try to visit with some of my neighbors off and on in terms of uh, their understanding the NFO better and joining the NFO. And it's been interesting, Butch, that uh, in uh, visiting with some of these people that uh, they uh, say, well, I don't want to join the NFO because I lose my freedom. But it's uh, a, a surprising thing. Uh, some of these same people that say this, uh, maybe a few months later you see the sale bill up in town. They've, uh, the, the banker has uh, sold them out or they've uh, been forced to quit for one reason or another, mainly because of the price of what they receive. And uh, I think people uh, need to be a little bit honest with themselves on, on this score and uh, look at the thing objectively and what should be done and can be done and do it. I think this is right, Ed. If the camera will come in on the chart there, I see they already have. This represents rural America. The rural church, the farmer, the businessman, the banker. And they're about, all of them, to slide downhill together. Now, what they need to do is join hands and realize that they all need each other. And that by joining hands and uniting together with a spirit of cooperation, as the title says, cooperation is the key, this will enable all of us to receive a fair price, the merchants to stay in business, the rural church to, co to continue in the community, our local schools, and so on and so forth. But if we fail to do this, we're all going down the slope together. Uh, Dr. Mueller, as far as uh, the uh, farmer and the Main Street cooperating together, what are some of the things that, that should be done and can be done to, to do this, to improve their general lot? Well, I would say the... Uh I think there should be more dialogue between the farmer and the uh, people on Main Street, that they understand each other's problems. Not all farmers are convinced that they have a problem. 
and uh, the, the main, man on Main Street, he deals with all farmers. And so he hears many different stories. And I think here again, the farmer has to be honest with himself and, uh, and uh, take a real inventory. Is he uh, doing fairly well? Now, we don't want to emphasize, any, we are not for inefficiency or poor management. But when we do have a good manager, is this manager really being adequately paid for his management? Or, and is he be, being actually paid for the time that he puts in? If he, for instance, went and uh, uh, sold out and went someplace else with his ability and his managerial ability and skill, what could he get someplace else? Because, because I think it's important not just to stay in business or in farming, but that we develop farming as a profession that's desirable for young people to want to go into. Uh, we just can't think of ourselves as staying in farming and willing to be put, willing to put up with all the hardships, we've got to also think in terms of farming as an industry that can attract and can the, the best young people, or at least a fair number of the young people, and that when they do go into farming, that these people will be adequately rewarded. Now, here I have a real problem. I have two sons, or I have four sons, but I just think of two. One is, works in Chicago, and he uh, is a maintenance man for a large ready-mix uh, uh, firm. And I know what he makes. And uh, he has little money invested. He probably maintains thousands and thousands of equipment. But my son on the farm, well, he manages a lot of capital. And not only manages capital, he has a lot of his own capital invested. And it takes the risk of having borrowed a lot of capital. But he does not re receive the same amount of return for his effort of management, labor, and uh, just plain hard work. Now, he's willing to put up with it because he likes farming. Otherwise, he wouldn't be in it. But will somebody else be willing to do this? This, uh, this doesn't attract young people to agriculture. Right. It's real serious, Ed, in this uh, point that now two and four tenths million farmers are over 55 years of age. And the point that Dr. Mueller is making, for instance, if his grandchildren don't want to continue in farming or somebody else's grandchildren, there'll be no farmers left after a while to carry on, and then Main Street will really suffer. Uh, if, assuming that uh, we continue in the general trend we have been over the years, Dr. Mueller, the uh, average age of the farmer becomes uh, higher and higher, and uh, there'll become a point where uh, th there aren't any young people coming on. What do you anticipate would happen in, at this point then? Well, I think the trend continues. We have less farmers, less farmers, and less towns. We, the, the declining population will either be accelerated. And I don't think any of us really want this. And I don't think this is, according to what I know and what I read, this is not necessarily in the best interest of the total nation. I'm not interested in maintaining farm just for the sake of maintaining a farm. I'm not concerned with necessarily with sentiment. I'm concerned with what is good for the nation. And I think what's good for the nation, according to my conviction, is this, that we have uh, uh, a fairly number uh, of good farm units, large enough size, that they can uh, function efficiently, that they can have, uh, return adequate income to the producer if he gets an adequate price. But he's constantly trying to get an adequate income by enlarging his, his holdings, by getting more land or more cattle, by vertical exp expansion. And uh, his, I would say, his uh, work load becomes too large. And this, I don't think, is desirable at all, because i am just tell you that they aren't going to put up with it. Uh, at this point, then, you'd have uh, outside capital come in, and you'd have a different farming structure than we're currently having. Uh, they'd be financed differently, and, uh, and uh, at this point, you would see very large farms, uh, consolidation farms into large farms, and uh, these people would basically be bypassing the local uh, businessmen in, in their dealings then. I would say it's a well-known fact, I think, that where we have big large farms, like, like we have in California, for example. The small town disappeared. By small town, I mean a town of 2,500 or 1,000 or 3,000, this like, you see? We have a lot of these good places, and they're good places to live. They're, they're very desirable. Now, they must fulfill a role. We don't want to maintain towns for the sake of maintaining towns. They must provide a service to society. And I think they can if the farmer is in a position to buy these services. I think, Dr. Mueller, you made an excellent point before the program started on the success 
of the farmer getting a fair price hangs the future of Main Street. Would you elaborate on that just a little? Well, I think they're, uh, they're in this together because I don't think the man on Main Street has any other source of income except the money he gets from the farmers for the service that he rendered. And if the farmer is in a, in a, a tight economic position, then he is not going to buy his services, or can he? See? And uh, in this sense, I would say the man on Main Street is also underpaid. I would say the man on Main Street is also not being adequately uh, reimbursed for his input of capital and his, and his risk and his management. See? The, uh, we've been talking uh, in terms of the man on Main Street and being a minister. What are your views as far as the church would be concerned in this issue? My main concern here is the churchman is for justice. I don't particularly identify with any particular farm organization. I have watched NFO over the years. I've been associated with, uh, uh, with it ever since it sort of started. But I work also with other farm organizations. I worked with the Farmers Union long before I ever heard of NFO. See. And I hold, by the way, I hold a membership in two farm organizations. I won't tell you which one, but I hold a membership in two of them. See. And uh, the, uh, this is largely because of the fact that my son is a farmer and I'm a co-partner with him in this. You see. So, I feel a person should support farm organizations. See. And, but coming back to my role as a churchman, I am for justice. See. And what I have, uh, I'll tell you frankly, what I particularly appreciate about NFO is the fact that I think they've identified the problem. The name of the problem is the farmer is not getting an adequate price. And in collective bargaining, I see the, uh, the, uh, a farm organization reaching for a marketing structure to deal with mass production. Urban society has done this a long time ago. They've come up with a, 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 a structure by means of which the laboring people could get a fair price for their input of labor. Now, I would say in the farming picture up to this point, we have not yet come up with a successful tool or structure that will give the farmer an adequate income. I see the possibilities of collective bargaining being the answer, but there be uh, and, uh, but if it fails, it will not be because of collective bargaining. It will be because the farmers are not using it adequately. And to use it adequately it means not just one or two using it. They've got to work together and make a commitment to each other. Just recently, we have observed the 4th of July, our Independence Day. I think we ought to check and see the commitment that the signers of the Declaration of Independence made to each other. They covered each fortunes and their lives, and they stuck with it. And that's why we became a nation. And until the farmers are willing to cover it with each other and stick with it and, make, and, and, and work for long-term goals, but they're always selling each, out, each other out, because as soon as they can get a better price someplace else, they desert their own organization. And here's where I come again as a churchman. This is wrong. I say that the farmers owe it to each other to work together. The farmers owe it to each other to get a better price. If a neighbor's house is on fire, the neighbors will come in and try to put it out. The farmer is in trouble because of an inadequate price. And I think the farmers ought to rally to around each other in order to get at this particular thing. And I think the businessmen on Main Street, they ought to be able to, they ought to support them and encourage them. Uh, going uh, on uh, to the uh legal aspect of the people on Main Street and the farmers working together, Butch, what are some of the things that would be involved here? Well, uh, of course, all the Main Street merchants that own a farm, as Dr. Mueller points out, uh, in partnership with the farm, they can belong to NFO as such. But they can uh, produce an uh, environment that will encourage the rest of them to organize and get a price. As Dr. Mueller pointed out, their future hangs together they either hang together or they will hang them one at a time. But it's illegal for the farmers to ask non-members to cooperate or, like, say, during a holding action. They can ask them to join the organization and support their efforts, but it's illegal for them to go out. And as Dr. Mueller pointed out, all the farm organizations have done some good. The Capra Volstead Act spells out that it can be producers and producers only that join together in this collective bargaining effort. Senator Capper made the statement that this gives the farmers the same legal right 
who bargain collectively that's already enjoyed by corporations. In other words, Dr. Mueller, collective bargaining under the Capital Volstead Act gives the farmers the legal right or the legal tool to be a businessman, a good businessman, and run his business like a business. And I think that for the good of all of them, the merchants and all of them should think about this thing. And it hinges the success of the farmer getting a price, hangs the future of Main Street. So most certainly they should take an active part in understanding the problem and promoting what can be done to solve it. Could I ask a question on this? Uh, for instance, um, if I'm not a farmer, if I'm not in the production business at all, just as, let's say a city consumer, then it is not possible for me to belong to NFO, right? No, this is right. The Capital Falls Act says it shall be producers and producers only. Now, another thing you mentioned, which I'd like to know, I hear a lot about this, but if, um, if you as a, a farm organization are a collective bargaining agent for a group of farmers, can then you, al can then you also be involved in being a purchasing agent? No, this, this would be a double agent, and this I would see. not work. In other words, an NFO, if it, if it wants to be the collective bargaining agent for farmers, then it cannot go into insurance, or it cannot go into uh, 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 selling of fertilizers, or the buying of feed, or this. Am I right in this? Yes, this is right, and this is why the Main Street merchants uh, mostly appreciate NFO, because they don't enter into any business of any kind, no competition with the local merchant. They don't try to... Now, we're not saying that all the farmers should give up their other farm organization, no, Dr. No. Mueller. What we're saying is that they should sit down together and go as one unit, as producers and producers only. In other words, the NFO could be s sort of the marketing agency in common for all farm organizations and all farmers. So this way, they can get together, and this is the grounds, the legal grounds, whereby the merchants and other people should encourage the farmers to do. Well, this, I think, the Main Street people ought to understand. See, I think the Main Street man, he, he ought not to be put in the position of having to take sides, farm, uh, joining one farm organization or another. But I think there is a role for the different farm organizations. And uh, the ones that do a real good job in the area of uh, uh, being purchasing agents for the farmers. And uh, some have a, do a real good job in the area of uh, opening up foreign markets. I think there's a real role for the various farm organizations. My concern is that they complement each other. And uh, I see no, no conflict at all in belonging to more than one farm organization because they do two different things. See? This is right. In fact, I belong to a total of uh, four farm organizations, Dr. Mueller. Uh, we uh, appreciate having been able to bring U.S. Farm Report to you today to uh, explain some of the things that are involved as far as the businessman on Main Street, uh, how he is affected by agriculture and how the uh, country as a whole is affected by agriculture. To those, uh, and at this point, I'd like to direct my remarks to those of you who that are not yet NFO members. If you have not yet joined the NFO, we would appreciate and that you join the NFO today because the success of the NFO hang, hinges on you, the non-member. Uh, in order to be successful as an organization, we must have active participation, and that would involve your membership. Now, <coughs> To those of you that are members, I would like to suggest that you contact your non-member neighbor and ask, uh, explain to him the NFO if he doesn't completely understand it, and ask him to join the NFO with you in order to raise farm prices. The NFO, during the next few weeks, will be on an uh, intensive campaign to get more members to make collective bargaining work real effectively for agriculture so that we can improve not only the income of agriculture but of the rural community as a whole. Members of the National Farmers Organization invite you to tune in again next week for more facts on agriculture and rural America, which is the gear wheel in our economy that produces the majority of our nation's new wealth. The National Farmers Organization represents new thinking in a new generation of farmers, for the farm income pattern sets the nation's prosperity. Tune in again next week at this same time for another edition of U.S. Farm Report, sponsored by members of the National Farmers Organization in this local area.